Hey, look, there's merch! This is a video about bunting, a divisive topic that is sure to elicit strong feelings. Do you like it when players bunt? Well, you might just be a geezer that wishes pitchers still threw underhand. Do you strongly dislike it when players bunt? Well, you might just be a computer nerd that needs to go outside and touch some grass. That dichotomy is what makes the 2019 Dodgers so interesting. The Dodgers are a forward-thinking baseball organization that boasts both deep pockets and insanely effective player development. But what if I told you, sorry, sorry, this is my ESPN 30 for 30 impression. But what if I told you that the smartest team also perfected the sacrifice bunt? The frequency of the sacrifice bunt had been pretty steady since 1954, the first year they were tracked separately from sack flies. Of course, the sack bunt was still utilized well before the 50s, Babe Ruth laid down three sacrifice bunts in 1927, the year he hit 60 home runs as part of the Murderer's Row Yankee lineup. And if that doesn't make you want to invent time travel to go back and fight Miller Huggins, I don't know what will. The sack bunt persisted through the introduction of the designated hitter in 1973 and only began its precipitous decline in the 2010s. Over the course of a decade, sack bunt totals were cut in half. Sacrifice bunts are some of Major League Baseball's most critically endangered species. Their habitat has been destroyed by the designated hitter, inflated home run rates, and people who wear calculator watches. You can sponsor a sack bunt today for just $5 a month. Call the number on your screen, and we'll even throw in a complimentary Omar Vizquel t-shirt. Here's the thing about sack bunts. Sack bunts are outs, and when you're trying to score runs, Outs are for suckers. Now you might ask, oh, but wouldn't you rather have a runner on second with one out than a runner on first with no outs? Well, the answer to your question is no! This is a run expectancy matrix from 2019 when the Dodgers mastered the sacrifice bunt. You can see clear as day that an offense would have expected to score 0.93 runs with a runner on first, no outs, and 0.71 runs with a runner on second, one out. Thus, a sack bunt lowers run expectancy for any given inning. But wait, the run expectancy matrix is just an average, and simply assumes that every hitter is league average. That's why it makes sense to sacrifice bunt with pitchers, because they're awful at hitting. Here's the slash line of all pitchers in 2021. It's appalling. The most likely outcome of a pitcher hitting is a strikeout. So while bunting with bad hitters doesn't increase run expectancy, it effectively hedges your bets, which is to say that it makes far more sense to bunt with hedges than bets. So now that we've established that it does in fact make sense to bunt with pitchers not named Otani, let's introduce the trio of bunting legends that headlined the Dodgers in 2019. Clayton Kershaw, Hyunjin Ryu, and Kenta Maeda. One thing that makes these three remarkable is that they have three very distinct baseball backgrounds. Clayton Kershaw was, of course, drafted by the Dodgers. As a pitcher, he had very limited hitting opportunities in the minor leagues, but racked up 743 plate appearances in the big leagues going into 2019, so he was fairly experienced in the ways of the bunt. Kenta Maeda developed in Japan's Central League, where pitchers hit, Let's all stop to admire this home run he hit with the Hiroshima card. Completely different league from Kershaw's, still, he was swinging the lumber. But Hyunjin Ryu came up in Korea's KBO, where they have a universal designated hitter rule. As such, he never even picked up a bat as a pro until he joined the Dodgers in 2013. He must have retained some batting skill from his high school days, as Ryu is actually the best career hitter of the three. <laughs> at least in Major League Baseball. When it comes to laying down a bunt, experience matters. It's always funny to watch a longtime American League pitcher try to lay one down in interleague play. It usually doesn't go well. Yet, these three Dodgers had completely different experiences, but were all extraordinarily good at sacrifice bunting in 2019. I mean, 
who could forget when Zach Granke tried to spoil Ryu's bunt with a 61 mile per hour beauty? That was classic Granke, but Ryu wasn't phased. He made it work later in the at bat. You've heard of hitting to all fields, but how about Kenta Maeda bunting to both fields? Yep, he sent two perfect bunts up the first and third base foul lines in the same game. Pinch hit for Ryu in the seventh inning? Nah, he's cruising. Leave him in and let him drop the bunt, setting the table for Corey Seager to drive in a run with a double. That's just good teamwork. Sooner or later, you had to guess Kershaw was going to join the fun. How about when he turned two pitches into two bunts versus Sean Anderson of the Giants? Those bunts were all over SportsCenter. Ooh, ooh, remember when Kershaw went way out of the zone to grab this sacrifice? I hope to one day tell my grandkids about that bunt. Of course, it all paled in comparison to what Kenta Maeda executed one fateful evening in August. The squeeze play? In the year 2019 of our lord? <laughs> it's so beautiful! Thank you, Kenta Maeda! At the end of the season, the Dodgers won 106 games, but were stunned by the Nationals in the NLDS. It was a disappointing conclusion, but something remarkable had occurred. Kershaw, Maeda, and Ryu each finished with at least 12 successful sacrifice bunts. Let's put those numbers into perspective. The three Dodger pitchers led all of Major League Baseball in sacrifice bunts, and I want to be very clear here, that kind of thing simply doesn't happen. Three players from the same team finishing tops in an offensive category? It certainly never happened with home runs or batting average. Sure, we've seen it with duos. Ted Williams and Johnny Pesky finished 1-2 in batting average in 1942. Willie Mays and Willie McCovey finished 1-2 in homers in 1965. But a trio of teammates leading the way? It's actually unprecedented. In a league with 30 teams, the top three sacrifice bunners were all Los Angeles Dodgers pitchers. And it's not just the volume of bunting that's noteworthy, the efficiency is key as well. The Dodger 3 had a 91% success rate on sack bunt attempts, compared to just 64% for the league that year. Failed attempts include things like not advancing the runner or a bunt strikeout. I say this because Ryu is listed as a perfect 12 for 12, but he did in fact have a couple bunt strikeouts. Probably just a record keeping issue. The point still stands that the Dodgers rarely screwed up. In fact, they avoided double plays entirely. You may be thinking to yourself, well, this was the best regular season team in the National League. Their stacked lineup probably created more opportunities for their pitchers to bunt. Maybe not. The number eight position in the lineup generated a 318 on base percentage compared to 314 for the National League average. Hardly a difference there. Those Dodger pitchers typically had Russell Martin and Austin Barnes hitting ahead of them, neither of whom had particularly great seasons at the plate. A team having three pitchers with at least 12 sack bunts has happened before. The 1993 Phillies did it with Danny Jackson, Ben Rivera, and a guy that's really going to make this YouTube comment section unbearable. And then the 1978 Dodgers, somewhat appropriately, actually achieved this with four pitchers. Here's why this video isn't about those teams instead. In the National League of 1978, one in 76 plate appearances was a sack bunt. In 1993, it was one in 78. But in 2019, you know, post Moneyball, home run records getting smashed, try one in 176 plate appearances. An environment far more harsh on the brave pitchers that dare to defy the status quo and just kind of stand there and let the ball bounce off their bat. Boink! That's the sound a bunt makes. Boink! So the sacrifice bunt is okay for pitchers because it's a productive out. It's still an out, but it's less damaging than a strikeout, which we've established is a very likely outcome. But sometimes, we can dream bigger. These bunts don't always have to be outs. They can pressure the defense into a mistake. Kenta Maeda, for example, reached space safely twice on throwing errors from Zach Godley and Chichi Gonzalez. Those plays can really extend the rally. In fact, the bunt's ability to put pressure on the defense might just be what saves it from extinction. <laughs> 
So, the sacrifice bunt limits the damage of a pitcher hitting, hedging the bets, yada yada, but the sack bunt isn't the only type of bunt. You can also bunt for a hit. In 2020, with the universal DH in place, MLB hitters laid down 163 bunts with the bases empty. They were rewarded with 80 singles. That's a 497 batting average and 439 WOBA once they got the bunt down. Now, if you don't know what WOBA is, don't worry. Just know that getting a bunt down with the bases empty produced more valuable outcome after contact than batted balls from Christian Yelich and Bryce Harper. And here's the thing, the most active bunt for hit guys were Cedric Mullins, Hanser Alberto, Manuel Margot, and Garrett Hampson. They don't have reputations as elite hitters, but they were once they got the bunt down. Now we're in 2021, and National League pitchers are hitting again, possibly for the very last time. Bunt for hit can work for some players, but if a designated hitter in the National League is truly inevitable, does it spell doom for the sacrifice bunt? Let's look at another run expectancy matrix. Remember this guy? But this one's a little different. It doesn't tell you how many runs are expected to score in a given situation, only how likely it is that a run is scored at all. So even though the total expected runs decreases when sack bunting a runner on second to third with no outs, the odds of scoring just one run actually increase. So what if there was a scenario where you had a runner on second, no outs, and needed only one run to win the game? Yep, it's the new extra innings rules. If the home team enters the bottom of the 10th in a tied game, that runner on second is all they need to win. And indeed, 12 of the 126 sack bunts in the entire 2020 season, that's almost 10%, were laid down by the home team in extra innings. In those scenarios, teams can do what the Phillies did in the bottom of the 10th versus the Nationals. DD Gregorius leads off by bunting JT Realmuto to third, Alec Bohm hits a sack fly, and bam, you've just walked off the game by making two outs. And Sean Doolittle somehow gets a loss for getting batters out. That's all the job description is. Outs. Tony Kemp, Rymel Tapia, and Luis Ringifo, just to name a few, all sack bunted in this exact situation, keeping it alive when the pitchers couldn't. Ironically, the traditional sacrifice bunt has been upheld by an unpopular extra innings rule that breaks with baseball tradition entirely. So, is the universal designated hitter the end of bunting? Maybe, maybe not. According to the numbers, both bunting for a hit and extra inning sacrifice bunts are viable. But let's say it is the end. Would it even be a bad thing? There's plenty of exciting features of Major League Baseball that are in decline. Stolen bases are down. That's a shame because both steals and caught stealings are exciting. Balls in play are down. That's a shame because web gems are exciting. But are sack bunts exciting, interesting, or aesthetically pleasing in some way? That's up to you. But you just watched a 14 minute video about them. So maybe that's your answer. $5 can't save the sacrifice bunt, but it can get your name at the end of a baseball bits. To find out more, head over to patreon.com slash foolishbaseball. Also, merch!